Welcome to today's webinar. My name is John and I'm part of the education team at Xero. But let's take a look at what we're going to be covering today. We'll start by talking about traditional ways of invoicing. How are you currently creating and sending out invoices? Then we'll discuss what e-invoicing actually means, how it works, and how it's different from other ways of invoicing. We'll list some of the key benefits, particularly the benefits around time savings, cost savings, and improvements to cash flow. We'll take a look at Xero's e-invoicing solution. So I'll show you how easy it is to create and send an invoice, and also what that looks like from the other side when you receive an invoice or a bill from your supplier. I'll talk about the $200 e-invoicing registration grant that's available to businesses who register on the e-invoicing network. So stay tuned for that one. And if there are any questions, I'll do my best at the end to answer those. We're going to start by talking about how businesses are invoicing today. So there are lots of ways that you might currently be creating and sending out invoices to your customers. Traditionally, these would involve a lot of paper. Maybe you print the invoice and post it to your client. Maybe you print a copy of that invoice and file it for your own records. And with that kind of method of creating invoices, mistakes often happen. Sometimes you make an, might make an error when you create the invoice and you need to edit the invoice and reprint it or resend it. Sometimes your customer might say they haven't received the invoice, so you need to issue a copy and resend it to them. So that leads to big delays in getting paid. Sometimes your customer receives the invoice, but they enter the wrong amount into their system, so they pay you the wrong amount. So just take a moment to think about how are you currently invoicing? How do you create invoices? Do you use Word or another word processing software? Do you use a specialist invoicing app? Do you use an accounting software like Xero to create your invoices? And how do you send those invoices to your customers? Do you post them? Do you email them? Or do you use an instant messaging app such as WhatsApp to send them to your customers? So I'd love to hear from you about what you're currently doing to create and send your invoices. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And with all our poll questions today, they are completely anonymous. So nobody else sees what you're responding to. So I'm just going to launch a couple of these questions for you. Hopefully you can see those on the screen. So how are you currently creating invoices? Select all of the options that apply. Just use your mouse, click those on the screen. And how are you currently sending invoices to your customers? And this gives me a much better idea of what your experience around invoicing is. So quite a few people using something like Word to create invoices, almost a third. Uh, great to see so many people currently using Xero. And by far the com most common method is to email invoices, uh, very popular these days. Okay, thank you for that. I'm just gonna close that poll down. So the Singapore government encouraging businesses to become more digital by registering on the e-invoicing network. So let's take a look at what this actually means and what e-invoicing is and how it works. And e-invoicing is actually really simple. It's sending an invoice digitally from one business to another business. But it's much more than simply emailing an invoice or using an instant messaging app. Because when you send an invoice via a secure e-invoicing or PEPL network, your invoice goes automatically into the buyer's accounting system. And when you receive an invoice from your supplier via the PEPL network, that invoice goes automatically into your accounting system. So straight away, there's a big time saving. You don't need to manually copy details from that invoice that you've received into your system. And it also avoids mistakes that can occur when you copy the wrong amounts or the wrong dates. And how does e-invoicing work? It works by using access points. So on this diagram here, up at the top, points two and three, these are two access point providers. So an access point provider is a connectivity services is a connectivity service that links businesses to the Pepple network. And um, when I talk about Pepple, Pepple is an international standard that allows businesses to speak to each other. Pepple is used by 
businesses in many other countries as well. So it also helps Singapore businesses transact internationally as well as domestically. So let's just follow this diagram on the screen through here from point one in the bottom left. As a seller, you create the invoice in your accounting software. That invoice goes to your access point. The message is sent automatically from your access point to the customer's access point. And from there, the invoice is sent automatically into your customer's accounting software. So to be able to e-invoice your customers, both you and your customer need to be registered on the e-invoicing network. Essentially, both the sender and the receiver subscribe to an access point provider. So it doesn't matter if you use different access point providers, there are um, many available. And the message is sent between the two access point providers. So that message exchange occurs between points two and three on that diagram. And the message is sent in a standard PEPL format. So because it's in this standard PEPL format, it doesn't matter what accounting software the buyer and the seller are using. One business can send an invoice digitally on the e-invoicing network to another business. So now we know what e-invoicing is and how it works, let's take a look at some of the benefits for you. Now, IMDA officially implemented the PEPL network in Singapore last year, and the main aim of this was to help businesses improve efficiency, reduce cost, and get paid faster. And IMDA have quantified some of these benefits. They estimate that a business will save a significant amount of time and money. The estimates of time savings are between 45 and 92%. We've already mentioned earlier that correcting mistakes takes time and costs money. The IMDA estimate that it costs, on average, $72 to rectify one invoice. So by eliminating these sorts of mistakes, there are big savings. And of course, not using paper is so much better for the environment. Now, Xero is an IMDA certified PEPL ready solution. So this means it's very quick to register for e-invoicing and get started. We've worked closely with Storecove. Storecove is one of the government's authorized access point providers. So let's take a look at how this works. Now, the process of e-invoicing usually takes just a, a few minutes, but sometimes it can take a little bit longer. So I've recorded this short demo just so I can show you the end-to-end -end flow of how it works, how we can create and send an invoice, and then what it looks like on the other side when you receive that invoice. So I'm using a, a dummy zero organization here, and we're gonna create a new sales invoice. Now let's enter the customer name. And if I click into that name, I can see some important information. So we can see the email that Storecove uses to send this invoice via the PEPL network. It shows the PEPL ID followed by at invoy.c. So I'll talk more about the PEPL ID after this demo, and we can see some other important customer information, what they owe us, what's overdue, any credit limits we might have set. Let's make this invoice due in 14 days and we'll send. Oh, we'll, we'll just um, call this up to consultancy. So it is for some consultancy work. And then we'll send the invoice. And that's how easy it is to create an invoice. So notice that first email is that invoice, invoy.c email that's used to send the invoice by the PEPL network. I've also copied in Kelvin here. Kelvin's the main contact at that company. So he'll get an alert to say there's an invoice and it's waiting to be paid. And we can see the invoice has now been sent. Now every transaction in Xero has got a full audit trail down at the bottom left in the history and notes. So we can see who created the invoice, who edited it. We can see it's been sent by the PEPL e-invoicing network. And there's that unique PEPL ID. And every transmission has its own transmission ID as well. 
Okay, let's take a look at what the customer sees when they receive that invoice. So I'm going to jump into another test organization here. And in this example, I am invoicing between two zero organizations. But one of the great things about invoicing is that you can invoice between different accounting systems. Down on the bottom right, we can see there's a draft bill. Uh, and we can see it's for invoice 24 um, with the same dates. There's also a document attached. Let's click in and see a, that, in, that draft bill in more detail. Now, if your software allows you to receive PDFs, we can see that PDF here on the left-hand side. And we can see that all the key information has been entered automatically, such as the date, the due date, the reference, and the description, the unit price. If I want to take a look at that online invoice, in Xero, I can click on that PDF and view the online invoice. If your software doesn't allow PDFs, you can click on the link in the email that I sent to Kelvin. Remember, I sent Kelvin an email as well as using that invoice.c email. So the customer can view the invoice. They can even pay it now. So we've set up a payment gateway just to allow customers to pay invoices a lot easier. So back into Xero. Really easy when you receive an invoice. All you need to do is allocate this to an appropriate account code and approve. So it's a very quick and easy process from both the buyer's and seller's perspective. And that is e-invoicing in Xero. So hopefully you really like the look of that and are excited. So how do you register for e-invoicing? And this is super quick and easy. So if you're a Xero user, navigate to connect .invoy.c. So hopefully you can see that address in the bar at the top. Connect.invoy.c is all you need to type in there. It will take you to this page. And just follow this sim these simple steps on screen. Click Connect to Xero. If you're not already logged into Xero, it will prompt you to log in. And you can select your Xero organization that you want to use e-invoicing for. Enter and confirm your details. And that's it. You're done. You're registered on the e-invoicing network. So that whole process of registering on this page probably takes about two minutes. So really quick, really easy. Sometimes, though, you might encounter an error when you're trying to register via Storecove on the e-invoicing network. So let's have a look at some of the common scenarios that you might encounter which would cause your registration to fail. Your Xero account has already been registered. So if you see this message, it just means that either you or somebody else has registered your Xero organization with Invoicey. So you don't actually need to do anything. You are ready to start e-invoicing. Your UEN has already been registered on the PEPL network. You'll see this message if you or somebody else has registered your business's unique entity number with another access point provider. Now, any PEPL ID can only be registered with one access point provider. So if you do wish to use Invoicey, then you first need to deregister with your existing provider, and then you'll be able to register with Invoicey. And this one is the most common error that you might come across when trying to register. So if you see this message, don't worry. It simply means that Storecove hasn't been able to verify your UEN automatically against the ACRA database. So Storecove needs to review your registration manually. So you don't need to do anything here. Storecove will review it and it will update you within one business day. And we saw when we looked at that demo, we were using a PEPL ID to send and receive e-invoices. So let's just take a closer look at that PEPL ID. Now, in the majority of cases, the PEPL ID is based on the business's UEN or unique entity number. Now, the left-hand side shows the identifier scheme. So for Singapore, 
0195 represents Singapore. SGUEN shows that we're using a Singapore unique entity number. In other countries, that's going to look slightly differently. So Australia, their country identifier is 0151, and they use the Australian business number. And then on the right hand side, we'll see the business identifier. So for Singapore, that's the uh, unique entity number. And put those two together and you get the PEPL ID. So this is the format that the IMDA recommends. Have the country identifier 0195, followed by a colon, then SGUEN and the UEN number. But sometimes you might see other ways of presenting that PEPL ID. And here are just some examples. So if you do um, find out what your customer's PEPL ID is, it might be presented slightly differently. But to send it in zero, this is the format you need. Put that country identifier 0195 for Singapore, use a dash, and then SGUEN followed by that UEN number at invoy.c. And that will allow Storecove to send that invoice via the e-invoicing network. Now, a common question that we get is, how do you find out what your customer's PEPL ID is? So you can search for your customer on the PEPL directory. So the address for this is directory.pepl.eu. And in this example, I've just searched for test uh, and it's returned a few results. And I've quickly found the PEPL ID. However, not all businesses are listed here. So if you can't find your customer on here, it might be worth contacting your customer to see if they do have a PEPL ID. And maybe even you can convince them to get onto the invoicing network if they're not on there already. So that's the PEPL directory, directory.pepl.eu. And I mentioned a grant earlier, so to encourage more and more businesses to register on the PEPL e-invoicing network, the Singapore government is offering a grant. It's an e-invoicing registration grant. This grant is a one-off $200 payment to businesses that register on the e-invoicing network. And all you need is a unique entity number. The grant is paid automatically to eligible businesses who register. So you don't need to apply for the grant. All you need to do is to be eligible and then register on the e-invoicing network. To be eligible, you need to register on the e-invoicing network on or before the end of December 2020. And businesses must be valid, active and registered in Singapore before 25th of March 2020. Now, the grant is available to the first 50,000 entities that register on the e-invoicing network. So if you haven't already registered, uh, worth registering today. Now, for more information on the e-invoicing registration grant, you can visit the IMDA's website at imda.gov.sg and search for e-invoicing. Here's um, a QR code. So if you do have your phone, you can scan that QR code. It will take you to the relevant e-invoicing registration grant page. So I'm just going to keep this slide on the screen for about 20 seconds um, while you grab your camera and take a picture of that QR code. Uh, if you don't have time, you can just visit the IMDA's website, imda.gov.sg. And very shortly, I'm going to look through any questions that you might have put into that Q&A box. If you've got any more questions, please use that Q&A box and type away. Um, here's a QR code which will take you to the Zero.com page where you can find out a lot more information about e-invoicing and how to get started with e-invoicing. So another QR code which you might want to take a, a quick picture of, this will take you to Zero.com. There's a lot of information all about getting started with e-invoicing. Uh, and information about the e-invoicing registration grant as well. Now, just before 
I have a look at some of your questions. I've got a little fun quiz for everybody. Two quick questions just to make sure you've been paying attention. Just a little bit of fun really to cover what we've been talking about. Which of these are benefits of e-invoicing? You can select more than one. So just use your mouse, click on all of the benefits of e-invoicing. So definitely time saving is, is one of the key benefits of e-invoicing. Everybody had that one. Cost saving as well is also one of the main benefits. And of course, it's better for the environment. There's no paper. Faster payments for sure, also one of the key benefits. So this is really great for a business's cash flow. They're going to get paid faster. Um, down at the bottom there, reduces error. It certainly does. You don't need to copy details from an invoice and enter them into your system. It's done automatically. So it reduces error significantly. Um, there was a couple of red herrings in there. Higher revenue, I'm not really sure about that. I don't think it's going to lead to higher revenue. Happier staff, well, maybe. Maybe your staff will be happier if they're using e-invoicing. And I've got one more question for you, part of my fun quiz here. Which of these statements best describes e-invoicing? So just select one of these. Uh, and of course, as most people said, it's the third one. E-invoicing is sending an invoice digitally to another business via a secure network. Uh, it is different from emailing an invoice or using an instant messaging app. If you email an invoice, that doesn't put the invoice directly into the other's accounting software. They still have to manually enter that into their software. So there's many great advantages over just simply emailing an invoice. It is sending it digitally from one business to another business. Okay, hopefully uh, I've got a couple of questions to have a look at. Let me just take a look in that Q&A box. Uh, a question from Josephine about the e-invoicing registration grant. How will I know? Um, how will the grant be dispersed to us? So you can find a lot more information about that on the IMDA's website. It will explain how that payment is made to you. Uh, a question here, is e-invoicing able to do e-signing? So at this stage, e-signing is not part of e-invoicing that we're going through. So uh, a question there from Elvi. Um, hopefully I answered this a little bit earlier, but how do you know if your customer is on the Pepple e-invoicing network? Um, so just check out that Pepple directory. Um, and if they're not listed there, it is worth maybe contacting your customer and asking them if they're set up for e-invoicing. Oh, a great question from Doris. Thank you for this, Doris. Something I forgot to mention. What is the cost to use Pepple for e-invoicing? So if you're using Xero, there is no additional cost for e-invoicing. So whatever accounting software you're using, do check that. It's a great question to check. What is the cost of e-invoicing? Um, with Xero, there is no additional cost. So it's free to send as many e-invoices and receive as many invoices as you like using Xero if you're already a Xero customer. But if you're using a different software, do check that with them. Uh, a question from Gina, if our customer does not have accounting software, are we able to send an e-invoice to them? Uh, the answer is no, they're gonna need a, an accounting software and they're gonna need to be registered on the e-invoicing network. So in this case, Gina, um, you'll be able to send and receive e-invoices to customers that are using e-invoicing and are registered. But for those customers that are not yet registered, um, you'll be sending invoices in a traditional way. Uh, and just to clarify, Bell, yes, as you are a zero customer, there is no additional cost for using e-invoicing. And just before I end the webinar, just a final couple of questions for you around how digitally ready you feel. So on a scale of one to 10, how digitally ready do you feel? So one is the lowest, you're not ready at all. 10 is the highest, you're very ready. And the second question, if a circuit breaker happened again, what online solutions would you implement? And with that second question, you can answer as many as you like. So most people, I think most people are feeling digitally ready. So there's a 
a few tens and eights, a couple of sixes. But of course, there's, there's a few people, quite a few people that are not ready yet as well, which is, is quite understandable, a big mix. It's really good to see that we've got a, a range of people on this webinar. Hopefully, this webinar has helped you feel a little bit more digitally ready. At least you're aware of what e-invoicing is, the benefits, and how you can start using it. And the second question, if Circuit Breaker happened again, what online solutions would you implement? So a whole range of stuff there. If, if you did put other, I would love to hear it. If you pop it into the chat box, um, I would love to hear what other solutions you're, you're thinking of. But cloud accounting is definitely a popular answer here. So if, if you're not using cloud accounting or you know of other businesses not using cloud accounting, this is, this is a great um, resource to have especially in times of circuit breaker like this. But also other online software, payroll software, very popular there, as we can see. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today on this webinar. I'm going to end the session today, so have a great day, everybody. Goodbye.